When is a match more than just a match? Thousands upon thousands may be viewed in a lifetime, but only a select few are forever ingrained into our hearts and minds. For six years, no singular match has provided as many memorable moments in the Mid-Atlantic as the CWF Rumble. From heart-stopping eliminations, to incredible feats of endurance, to emotional victories, Every one of tonight's 30 athletes will have the opportunity to shine like never before. It's the Rumble, and everybody's got a story. In 2004, Brad Attitude was victorious. In 2005, Rick Converse survived all the odds. And now in 2006, Kanak, Cyrus, and the Dynasty make it 3 for 3 in the Rumble. Brad Stutz has led many competitors into the rumble over the years only to have them all end in failure or betrayal. Now one year removed from the most bitter of losses, his faction looks to recoup from the most shocking of defections as the sole remaining members look to bring the biggest of wins back to Fatback Enterprises. The self-proclaimed king was only here for a few short months and had victory in his grasp one year ago only to have it slip away at the very last second. Now, one year later, can Marcellus King go that one step further and become a true king of the Mid-Atlantic? There's never been a rookie in CWF history that's undergone a trial by fire like Roy Wilkins. And tonight, the rage is set to come out on 29 other opponents. While Michael McAllister may be helpless to defend himself, Solomon Spades has led him to championship glory in the past. Can tonight be the night where the Dark Watch takes over the Mid-Atlantic? El Fuego Jesse Ortega, already a TV title run that broke records, a Weaver Cup champion, and now just a rumble win away from adding to his already growing legacy. He's already having a career year as Mid-Atlantic television champion, Brass Monkey, one of the true veterans of the rumble will get another shot tonight. Brad Attitude began his career in this very match in 2002. Two years later, he was the winner. Two years from winning it is tonight. The Diamond is one of the most improved wrestlers in the entire Mid-Atlantic throughout 2006. Can tonight be KC McKnight's night to shine like never before? Simply Steve Green, represents the new dynasty. No longer the American Steel Ninja, simply Steve Green looks to redeem his 2005 elimination. Rock and roll, Matty D. He returns to the scene of the crime, one year removed from a shocking Final Four appearance that ended in disaster. A very handsome man has had it all slip away. Can Mitch Connor rebound and take home one of his biggest wins ever? Six years of rumbles, and as of tonight, only one person will have competed in each and every one, and that one person is not even a man. G-Star looks to make this rumble her greatest ever. He's already the strongest man in the Mid-Atlantic. He's already a tag team champion, and he's one of the most popular wrestlers in CWF history. Tonight, can Tank Lawson make this his biggest rumble ever? It's the one match that everyone has waited all year for, from the fans to the announcers to the wrestlers themselves. One match for that one moment, for that one memory. The rumble is next. I got what I wanted. Now it's time to step up. I'm not 29. I'm number one for a reason, and I'm going to win tonight. Come on! Right here. I couldn't agree more, Matty D. The sixth annual CWF Rumble is about to get officially underway and a very sportsmanlike start to it as rock and roll Matty D takes on Brass Monkey, number one and number two. And that's the way it works out. I mean, this is all a numbers thing, numbers pulled from a hat. Matty D, though, I mean, he had a high number. He took it back to the back, held it up because he he got something to prove. He wanted to start this thing from the beginning and end it. You know, I can understand to some degree, but Matty D, he drew number 29. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, but without 
a chance to get his revenge on Michael Yamaha tonight, he decided he'd take it one step further. He would request number one. And right now, it's Maddie and Monkey May taking a bite out of crime, which is normally a page out of Monkey's playbook. Monkey saying, wait a minute, that's my move. I think that surprised him more than anything. Look at this. And Maddie's like, uh, okay, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. These two young men, this is quite entertaining already. And this would certainly be a very fun match for the Mid-Atlantic Television title. Ow. And of course, whoever wins this sixth annual CWF Rumble gets a shot at any title they want. And last year, Rick Converse won. He then won the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight title, and everyone knows the story from there. He then won the AWA World Heavyweight title. So, so who knows what may befall the eventual winner of this match. And our number three is one of our newcomers, Justin Duke. Yeah, Justin Duke making his way into the ring now. See, see how this one turns around. These two guys in here biting on each other, working it around. Duke going to the top rope. Going to try to take advantage of this. Well, both guys were temporarily distracted with one another, but not for long enough for Justin Duke's sake. And I tell you what, Justin Duke is interrupting a little something going on. They're both taking it out on him right now. 60 seconds of competition has quickly led to a double team on Mr. Justin Duke. Yeah, Justin Duke interrupted these two guys, beating the fire out of each other, and I guess it got the ire up of both of them because now they're beating the fire out of him. I think we only got a small taste, quite literally, of what could befall us in a Matty D Grass Monkey singles match. And right now, Justin Duke is getting more than he can handle. And remember, in the CWF Rumble, it's only 60 seconds between each entry. That's right, now, you know, it's time for number four to make his way in it. <laughs> oh my goodness, Matty D's flying into Justin Duke. Number four making his way into the ring area right now. Yeah, Mr. Popularity himself, Michael McAllister, who join in. <laughs> right. Apparently he's not the teammate that Brass Monkey and Matty D requested. That's right, I tell you what, now they turn their iron on to Michael McAllister and no amount of man voice is gonna save him from these two because they are fired up. Look at this, just stop the clothesline. Backcracker on Michael McAllister, and it couldn't happen to a better man. And what in the world is Matty D and Brass Monkey having mine here? <laughs> McAllister gets crushed. McAllister in the wrong place at the wrong time. And I tell you right now, I think he wishes he was already eliminated here. Now, Matty D and Monkey help each other up, but you gotta watch it there. They're gonna jump each other again. Well, now that they've incapacitated their two other opponents, it's time for some real wrestling. Cecil Number five, Scott. another rookie from the CWF Dojo, Cecil Scott. And this is such a huge match for any rookie that gets into it because it's an even playing field. A rookie can make the biggest match of his life his first one. And I tell you what, he just made the first mistake of the match. I mean, he was, you know, flailing away on Justin Duke, Brass Monkey, Matty D come over, get his attention, and he quits. Matty D has apparently studied many, many tapes of Brass Monkey, and now Monkey's showing him how it's done as we got McAllister and Justin Duke fighting it out. Oh, there you go. Now Monkey and Matty D making a teamwork out of this deal here. Cecil, Cecil Scott, I mean, he, he's got to be in a world of hurt. Now he finally gets somebody one-on-one -on -one over here in the corner. Of course, it's been noted many times in the past, a man is eliminated when thrown over the top rope, both feet touch the arena floor, and we're about to have number six on their way to the ring. Ah, Los Chivas! Los Chivas, I believe this is numero uno, which of course would be the first one in. Yeah, that, that's numero uno. I recognize that headbutt style anywhere. The very unorthodox style, to say the least, of one of Mexico's most popular soccer teams. That's right, nobody wants a part of it right now. You know what I mean? Wait a minute, Justin Duke gonna come in. He's gonna get gored. He got gored. He's getting gored from head to toe. Cecil Scott over here in the corner trying to eliminate the first man from this year's Rumble. <laughs> this is, uh, the GOAT's not sure who to jump. Cecil Scott gets gored in the nether region, 
as Las Chivas has certainly thrown many a man off their game plan here in the early going of the sixth annual CWF Rumble. Yeah, and I tell you what, we got the next one in, and oh, business is picking up. Big Donnie Dollars enters the fray. Certainly poised to be a big heavy hitter as Fatback Enterprises crumbling as it is with Michael Yamaha just having his little pouty fit and leaving CWF and Fatback Enterprises. Donnie Dollars is pretty much the sole survivor left for Brad Stutz to put all his change into and try to get something back. And Dollars is in the ring going off on an old foe in Matty D. And going off now on Los Chivas. I mean, whoever's first in line, Big Donnie Dollars, is going to go right off on. Look at that, Los Chivas attacks him low and got him down on his knees. Los Chivas taking sabbatical on Dollars' head there, but Dollars sidesteps him, and our first elimination of the sixth annual rumble comes at the hand of Donnie Dollars, and Cecil Scott may have just attacked the wrong man. Cecil Scott looking for somebody to get hooked up with here. Smartest thing to do might be lay down on the floor and hold on to the ropes, but Cecil Scott is number two on the way out. We got Ashley Walker coming to the ring next. And Justin Duke just got caught in the arm, and Justin Duke takes a very unhospitable toss to the arena floor. We've got Monkey and Donnie Dollar squared off now. And Grass Monkey trying to initiate something. Gonna take a, gonna back up just a little bit, take the boot, and here we go back into the midsection. Dollars goes to rake in the face. And this would be a very interesting singles match. It certainly would. Dollars has already eliminated three individuals in a short time in there. Clothesline, Grass Monkey in the back of the head, and that's four in less than 90 seconds for Donnie Dollars. And who is Dollars talking trash to at the stands? I don't know, but I tell you, Donnie Dollars, the rate he's going, he could be the only man left standing if he keeps taking him out the rate he's taking him out. Matty D and Dollars square off once again. Wait a second. That's Otto Schwanz! Otto Schwanz, who Dollars has supposedly recently ended the career of. Dollars! Otto Schwanz is in from the crowd and is eliminating Donnie Dollars! And well, G-Star, you next one up. I tell you, Schwanz up, making his exit. He did what he came to do. Otto Schwanz get a little bit of retribution from Donnie Dollars, recently trying to put him out of action, and we got a tag team match right now. It's G-Star and Maddie, two-thirds of the GD Rage, and Michael McAllister is out of there, courtesy of G-Star. Hits the concrete. His night's over. Ashley Walker getting battered face first into the corner. <laughs> he doesn't want to get up at this point. And right now, Ashley Walker is squared off with the only individual to appear in each and every CWF rumble, and G-Star is taking it right to his face. I tell you what, G-Star could be a wild card in this one. The world's most dangerous woman is very capable of winning this battle, especially when she's alongside her regular tag team partner in rock and roll, Matty D. If these two can team up and eliminate one as each one comes in. Oh, but we get the powerhouse, Marcellus King in. Marcellus King got the back of the hair of G-Star, and oh, he tastes the elbows. Wait, you don't square off against G-Star and think she's just some average, puny little woman. G kick to the midsection of Marcellus King, trying to close on him, Marcellus King absorbing it. G going for another one. I tell you what, Marcellus King hit the ring fresh, ducks under the clothesline, goes behind, setting her up. STO by Marcellus King on G Star. G Star's down, Marcellus King partially disrobing here. Back to work on G Star. We've still got a battle going on over here in the corner. This is going to get difficult to call as this ring fills up. The powerful Marcellus King, the self proclaimed King of Mid Atlantic, depositing G Star over the ropes, but G trying to hang on, trying to fight her way back inside the square circle. Oh, Marcellus drop down, close on G across the top rope, and G has been eliminated from the sixth annual Rumble. That's right, look at this. Ashley Walker holding up rock and roll, Manny D. And here we got another, another one of the monsters of the dojo making his way in. Matty D taking a beating inside. Big Ray Kandrick finally making his entrance into the run. Yes, Ray Kandrick of making his first ever CWF match is poised to be one of the prized pupils from the CWF Mid-Atlantic Dojo. Well, we got some size in there right now with Ray and Marcellus King. That's right, and I tell you what, Ashley Walker's taking a beating right now. Matty D's trying to get away from Marcellus King. King trying to work him over. You know, this is getting pretty good. This is why we do this every year, people. Ashley Walker, of course, recently the personal assistant of Mr. Champagne himself. That relationship, I don't know, it's kind of 
on the mend or on the break, depending on your point of view right now. And we gotta make note, because of what happened earlier in the night, neither the Gemini Kid or the Kamikaze Kid is gonna be able to compete in this year's edition of the Rumble. I'm not sure who's taking Kazi's place, but we did see the Gemini Kid sold his number, and we all know that Gemini Kids always had the greatest luck in CWF history when it comes to drawing numbers in the Rumble. He sold number 30 to none other than Sheik Cornelius J. Lumpkin III. Yeah, beautiful. Puts him in the cat bird position coming in last when most of the guys involved in this match will already be eliminated. I mean, they're battling in here right now, and it's tooth and nail. We've got Ashley Walker trying to get forced over the top ropes. This Jerry Wayne and Ray Kandrak yeah, in here working on him. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's Jerry Wayne trying to lend Ray Kandrak a helping hand and get rid of Ashley Walker, who's hanging on to that top rope like his life depending on it. Meanwhile, Matty D in a world of hurt. Square it off with Marcellus King. Marcellus King showing off the power as he does frequently. Did you see the countdown clock in the left-hand corner here? Our next man makes his entrance here. Oh, our next competitor. Ah, oh, it's Los Chivas numero dos. Well, his tag team partner may long, no longer be there, but it's time to gore again. Courtesy of Los Chivas numero dos. I tell you what, Los Chivas doesn't even have his wrestling boots on. He's going on a cheval tonight. Marcellus King and Ray Kandrak squared off. Certainly the biggest challenge that either man has faced so far in this rumble. Marcellus King now off the ropes. Big sledgehammer like axe handle with a skull. And that right there is a little bit of seeing veteran over the rookie here because King knows where he's at in the ring. The rookie may not yet. Ashley Walker has no friends whatsoever. It's made that apparent very quickly. And numero dos, he keeps Ducking and dodging, juking and jiving, and has Marcellus King in a very precarious position, although it would not be an elimination because Marcellus did not go over the top rope. And I tell you what, look at this, Matty D extending the legs, big kicks, and uh... Damian Wayne, who's made a lot of noise about wanting the AWA World Heavyweight title or the Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight title, winning the Rumble would go a long way in doing just that. It would set him in a position where he could name the title he wants to. He's gonna climb into the ring and the first person he squares off with is Big Marcellus, the Mid-Atlantic King. We could have a battle of Mid-Atlantic Kings here. We certainly do, and Jerry Wayne, I don't know what he was thinking, running into the arms of Damian Wayne. He hasn't had many matches yet at CWF Mid-Atlantic, but Damian Wayne certainly looks to have all the tools to be a huge force in the near future. That's right, you see Marcellus King turning his attention to number one, Matty D, and he was just beating him into the canvas. You gotta wonder how smart now, Matty, was that buying the number one, trading for number one. Well, Matty wanted to push himself to the utmost limits, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's number one, and he's still in there, and Jerry Wayne well, better watch out because he's about to get going from behind, and here's the other two-thirds of the GD Rage. Roy Rage Wilkins, and Roy Wilkins as Ray Kandrak gets eliminated. Roy Wilkins is the halfway point. He is number 15, Randolph. That's right, that's 15 of the 30 people that's going to be entering this fray tonight for a chance to name their title shot as we see Jerry Wayne deposited onto the concrete by Damian Wayne. Damian Wayne certainly being a force here in the six hander rub one. Roy Wilkins, before he can even get started, is in the arms of Marcellus King, but Roy Wilkins slips out from behind. Marcellus King got his world rocked again by, by the rookie sensation as we see Los Chivas numero dos ejected from the game. Damian Wayne eliminates another one on his quest for a title shot of his choosing. Tell you what, Roy Wilkins taking it from both Marcellus King and Damian Wayne right now. He better hope he gets a little friendly face coming out. Look at this. It's the diamond, Casey McKnight. Casey McKnight. Oh, that's down. And Marcellus King oh, hung on. I thought Casey McKnight was going to make an impact early by eliminating Marcellus King, but Marcellus still alive. Marcellus King lucky on that one. The diamond using his brain, and that's what you've got to do to win a truck wreck like we're seeing in the ring right now. He's got a little bit of something for everything. Uppercuts for Damian Wayne. You see Marcellus King back in through the ropes. Ashley Walker still somehow. Well, there he goes out to the floor. Well, there it was. The rage eliminates Ashley 
Walker. Good job, Roy. Always proud to see Roy Wilkins achieve something. He's such he has such spirit for being in this sport for less than one year. Yeah, potential unlimited for that young man, but he's got to remain healthy. He's already had a little bit of a problem with a with an injury at the hands of who else but we keep mentioning his name but he's not here any longer michael yamaha but right now we've got the next man in oh wait we've got a big one now it's a former winner he won the 2004 cwf rumble it's brad attitude one member of the original dynasty attitude in fists of fire against kc mcknight and mcknight not sure exactly what to do here and they are going at it. Attitude's unloading, goes on to the next man. Damian Wayne tries to wave him off, but he takes a shot to the chest anyway. Just like in 2004, Brad Attitude has taken on everyone in his way. Remember, that year, Brad Attitude drew number seven and won it. He got a much better number here in 2006. Yeah, he's got to be remembering that. Damian Wayne got hold of the diamond, Casey McKnight, trying to work him up over the top rope right now. I tell you, this is great. This is the sixth annual Indy Rumble, as we used to call it, the CWF Mid-Atlantic Rumble. You're only going to see it here. An event born out of the horrible events of 9-11, the first ever CWF Rumble was actually a benefit for the New York Fire Department with every single dime that was drawn from the original Rumble going to the New York Fire Department and now entering into the ring the first time in this one, another CWF Mid-Atlantic rookie, Mark Van Hook as Casey McKnight elevates Marcellus King and a man that many had pegged as quite possibly a winner of this year's Rumble. Marcellus King, he drew a very tough number and in the end, Casey McKnight is the one that ends his night. Tell you what, look at this. Brad Attitude, Damian Wayne going toe to toe here, sizing each other up. Wayne ducks under, and they are going at it. Super kick by Attitude, and he helps out his good friend and member of the Dynasty recovers by eliminating Damian Wayne. Casey McKnight's got somebody else up here in the corner. I can't tell who it is, but their body's starting to pile up on the floor and in the ring. And Mark Van Hook is definitely in a world he wants no part of because he is certainly outmatched at this stage of his career, but it's El Fuego. You got it, El Fuego, Jesse Ortega. I tell you what, business picking up any time Ortega steps through the ropes because he will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody, anytime, any place, anywhere. Casey McKnight lined up with the rookie, Roy Rage Wilkins, two great youngsters this sport. Right there's another one, rock and roll, Matty D. You get enemies fighting enemies, friends fighting friends, because it all comes down to a shot at any championship you want. And I tell you what, this rookie Van Horn in the corner is taking a beating. He is getting tenderized by both Attitude and Jesse Ortega. Mark Van Hook earning his stripes early, and right now those stripes are etched across his chest, courtesy of Jesse Ortega. Now yeah, Ortega, oh wait a minute, <laughs> Van Hook tries fighting back, and all it does is just irritate Ortega. Brad Attitude's final tap, and Alex Adonis, now this whether you love him or you hate him, this is a great story, Randolph, as he squared off against Jesse Ortega. It was one year ago tonight that Alex Adonis had his last professional wrestling contest. It was the fifth annual CWF Rumble. And on the ride home that night, Alex Adonis was in a horrible car accident. As Mark Van Hook's eliminated by Ortega, Alex Adonis' career was nearly ended the night of the CWF Rumble one year ago tonight. And one year later, he's returned to, I dare say, the scene of the crime to compete in the sixth annual Rumble. Well, you know, from what I hear, his life nearly ended that night. I mean, we didn't see Alex for almost seven and a half, eight months after last year's Rumble. And when we seen him just a few months back, he was on crutches. And you got to know that this is oh. all adrenaline that's got him in the ring at this point right now. Anyway, I mean, I, I question, should he be in the ring anyway? Well, I hate that his story cost Roy Wilkins, his shot. Oh, we've got another rookie, and a rookie that I, I don't know right off. I would say his chances are not good. Well, it, yep. It's Jersey Nick Richards. I thought that guy worked at a sub shop. I, I know him. He's that kid that shortchanged me on my sub last week. Yeah, you show him. Brad, rip that shirt off. Well, Brad Attitude's taking it to him like he shortchanged Attitude as well. Yeah, and he didn't put no mustard on my sub either. You show him, Casey. European uppercut by Casey McKnight as 
Brad Attitude has pulled out a short arm scissors in a rumble. Oh, look and, at this. And Ortega with the figure four. And we've got three guys locked up and, and possible tap out conditions here. And what was that? Jersey Nick Richards just made a very Case, huge mistake. KC didn't tip him or what? How dare Jersey Nick Richards slap KC McKnight. Look at that. He imploded the the chest. Now wait a minute, Ty Dillinger making his way through. I'm not gonna let Ty do this. Oh no, he's got Steve Green with him. Certainly one of the more deplorable individuals mocking the boogie woogie man, Rob McBride. Simply Steve Green, one half of the fake new dynasty is in the ring. And look at this. What, what, what's Jersey Mike doing here? I mean, this, this is this it's is Jer bizarre. It's Jersey Nick, right? No, he works at Jersey Mike's. Steve Green and Jesse Ortega, certainly no love lost there. I tell you what, they are going back and forth. You can hear these chops all around the arena. And I tell you what, they're gonna be feeling this in the morning. Of course, we're down to that portion of the rumble. For those that had the luck of the draw, the very good numbers, say 20 and up, are getting to enter now. And miraculously, Matty D is still alive and well. Yeah, we thought we'd been saying that just a few moments ago. He was in dire straits. Bobby Fonta. Bobby Fonta, the man that was a hired henchman in last year's Rumble trying to eliminate Rick Converse, has returned to his scene of the crime at the sixth annual CWF Rumble. That's right, Bobby Fonta getting softened up with shot to the spine by Ortega. You see Alex Adonis trying to eliminate Matty D again. I mean, how many people have we called trying to eliminate Matty D so far in this tonight? It's very surprising. I'll tell you one thing, Matty D was sent out on a mission when he got here. He drew number 29, he handed it in for number one. Whoever drew 29, I'm sorry, whoever drew number one had the best luck ever. I mean, their night went from as bad as it gets to just about as good as it gets. Well, what, what about the Sheik? You've already said the Sheik bought the number from Gemini Kid. I mean, how much better can that get to come in last? Well, true, but yeah, I, I dare try even envision Sheik Lumpkin leaving with the title of his choosing as Jersey Nick Richards gets deposited by El Fuego Jesse Ortega and Mr. Elite Jake Manning is on his way to the ring. That's right. You tell Jersey Mike I didn't want pickles on that sir. It's Jersey Nick. Whatever. Jake Manning in all his glory entering the CWF Rumble driving the shoulder block into Bobby Fonta. Yeah, and you're starting to see some of the larger competitors are able to stand tall, even though we've already lost Marcellus King. I mean, these guys are, there's no love lost between any of them. They all have history with each other here. You can definitely see that the rookies have almost been weeded through to leave some of the true bears. Oh, attitude, attitude, attitude hung on there. And right now he's trying to suplex Steve Green to the arena floor. Steve Green holding onto that rope for life because it's you know, being suplexed over out to the floor, that could be your life right there if you use the land wrong. Goes for the super kick. Steve catches Oh, him. blow, blow! A low blow by Steve Green eliminates Brad Attitude just before Attitude's tag team partner, X Cyrus, gets to the ring and he goes straight to the aid of his partner. That's right, he's checking out his partner on the outside. Steve Green posing up on the ropes, a bad place to be. Ortega's caught him up there trying to toss him out. Matty D still in this one, working on the back of Alex Adonis. Casey McKnight, he's been in there for a good time as well. Not as long as Rock and Roll Matty D, of course. I believe Casey was number 16. Right now, Matty D working, uh, clawing away at the face of Mr. Elite. And Alex Adonis catches him. I mean, you know, like I said, this is getting kind of hard to call because this is starting to pile up like a wreck in here. x is finally in. Making sure Attitude was okay, and then he went straight to the man that cost Attitude this match, Simply Steve Green. And simply Steve Green holding on again for all it's worth as the counter counts down. See who else is going to enter this fray. Oh, Tank Lawson! You talk about one of the odds-on favorites as Bobby Fonta trying to hang on for dear life. X Cyrus comes with a super kick and Fonz is out of here. Tank Lawson, what a great number for him to draw. Yeah, and Tank Lawson still got to be upset about what has transpired earlier in the evening with the former AWA Mid-Atlantic Heavyweight Champion and his tag team partner, 
And yeah, I'd say he just made three points at about 47 yards there with the wind blowing at him. Oh, he just grabbed the leg of Alex Adonis. And Alex Adonis may be out of here short for the night, courtesy of Take Lawson. I'll tell you what, Manny D down on the apron, Exire is kicking, pushing, doing everything he can, trying to get him down to the floor. Tank Lawson still wreaking havoc in the ring. Just about dropped Steve Green around the back of his head as Casey McKnight lays some shots in on Mr. Elite and Jesse Ortega for good measure. Yeah, Casey McKnight, pretty impressive so far. I mean, right now he, he's he's going straight to the face of any... Wait a minute. The lights have gone out and we've seen this before. CWF mid -Lenic. I hope it's just... Solomon, Solomon Spain. Spain. You got it. Right in the middle of the ring, this bizarre character calling himself the, the a member of the Black Watch. I mean, he doesn't look Scottish to me, I'm sorry. The Black Watch is officially entered, and even though Michael McAllister did not last long in the rumble, last long in the rumble, Solomon Spades eliminates Casey McKnight. One of the favorites over the top rope now, as you see. Steve Green and X Cyrus going at it. Tank Lawson gonna go toe to toe. But Solomon Spade went straight to the eye. Tank Lawson isn't gonna play any mind game with Solomon Spade. It doesn't matter how spooky you may be, a thumb to the eye is gonna make you very human very quick. Yeah, regardless if your eye looks like a playing card denominator of some sort, as Tank slams Solomon Spade. And you can see the counter is counting down. We're about to have another man enter the fray. Champagne! We're getting down near the end, and one of the true icons of modern day Mid Atlantic wrestling has drawn a tremendous number. That's right, Champagne in working in conjunction with Tank Lawson, flailing away on simply Steve Green. You gotta wonder, Champagne, it, it, this is another one that had the odds looking in his favor, and the later you come into this match, the better those odds get. Steve Green trying to hang on there, courtesy of. Oh, take Lawson, elbow right between the eye, and how good is it? Does he simply Steve Green get eliminated? That's right, Champagne Jesse Ortega go over to Spades. Champagne's gonna back off and let Ortega chop on him a little bit. Ortega with Spades in hand is take Lawson. Two of the most popular individuals, take Lawson and Cyrus, actually battling it out now. That's right, and here we go, Matty D. He's still in this thing. But you gotta wonder for how long. See, it is struggle over here on this side. Ortega struggling with Solomon Spades. They're, they're going to eventually eliminate each other the rate they're going. And oh, it's Mitch Connor as Ortega charges at Spades, and El Flaco's eliminated. And we've got to mention number 29, Matty D, turned in number 29. And this is the man that originally had number one, Mitch Connor. Handsome Mitch Connor, I tell you what amazing tag team championship run they had earlier in 2006. Very unpredictable, very talented young man. Quite surprising, and look at this. Oh, Mitch Connor wasn't paying attention to Matty D. Just about eliminated the man that he traded in numbers for. I mean, he didn't even make an entrance. He could have climbed up on the ropes and about called it a night. Take loss in the next Cyrus. Strange opponents, but they're still fighting it out. That's right, Champagne, we see him delivering boots over here in the corner. Matty D still in this one by himself over in the corner. And in comes, in rushes Connor. Oh, it's Solomon Spades and Champagne is battling. Oh, and here comes number 30 himself, Sheik Lumpkin. Yeah, Sheik Lumpkin and, and King Kong Bundy's third grandchild. Connor and Matty D, number one and number 29, still fighting it out. Well, it's amazing, I tell you, I would have never... Oh, no! No, Matty! Sad, that he would have made it all the way through all 30 coming into the ring and technically he did because Lumpkin hadn't got in the ring yet. Matty D though, what a tremendous effort. He guaranteed victory. He had his heart set on some form of retribution after Yamaha bailed on this promotion as x Cyrus deposits Jake Manning over the top rope. It was a great effort by Matty D, but really what human being can go from number one? I know I'm getting old and I got bad eyes, but what was Jake Manning smiling so big about when he got eliminated? And now Lumpkin finally in the ring, and what a disgrace it would be for Lumpkin to leave this night as winner. <laughs> Look who he's trying to eliminate. Come on now, get real. Well, I think he's gonna need some help to leave his winner because he didn't have any luck against Tank Lawson. He's not having much better against X-Cyrus. You know Tank Lawson's gotta be looking down at this skinny little manager thinking, 
you know, I really didn't expect this. I get a shot against this guy who tried to bring me into CWF Minute Man and try to get me to turn my back on the United States of America. Tank Lawson with Lumpkin well in hand. And that big bodyguard on the outside can do nothing but stand there because he's not in this match. And look at this. Boy, can go catch Lumpkin because Lumpkin's been eliminated. And you better believe no one lasted shorter in this year's Rumble than Lumpkin did. Yeah, I mean, Last in, first out, whatever, I mean, whatever, right? Lumpkin's not known for his wrestling ability anyway. He's known for spending money that isn't his to put together a small... Oh! Champagne deciding a battle with Tank Lawson would not be well advised as Spades and X Cyrus jockeying for position as we are down to the final five in the sixth annual CWF Rumble. That's right, X Cyrus struggling with Solomon Spades trying to put him out over the top rope. Tank Lawson... Ah, he's going to come over and lend a hand here. We may be bringing this one down to four. As X Cyrus and Lawson both fighting, and Solomon Spade's feet didn't touch the ground. And look at this, roll right back under. X Cyrus starts stomping. We certainly have five very eclectic individuals, both with their own style and their own way. And I would venture to say any one of these five could really win this one, Randolph. I'll tell you what, look at this. Tank Lawson going back to the poke to the eye, setting up everything. Slingshot X Cyrus over the top rope. And X Cyrus is down. We're down to the final four. I think a lot of fans may be upset to see Tank Lawson eliminate X Cyrus, but that just demonstrates the power of Tank Lawson, and then he's going to take on anyone who attempts to win this one. That's right. Looks like he's going to try to tie up Mitch Connor and eject him from the ring. But right now, Solomon Spades still in control here. Shoot champagne into the corner champagne up and over ducks the clothesline and delivers one of his own Solomon Spades down. We've got him paired off in champagne and Solomon Spades on one side but we've got Mitch Connor very mismatched against the powerful Tank Lawson on the other. Oh smart move veteran move by Mr. Spades that, that headbutt right into the midsection took a breath out of champagne caught him by surprise Connor struggling, not having much success getting Tank Lawson off his feet or over the top rope. The final four in the sixth annual CWF Rumble has come down to this. Solomon Spades with Champagne, fires him off, drop toll holes, Champagne almost out of the ring, but it would not have been an elimination because it wasn't over the top. I'll tell you what, though, it looks like he caught the face on the bottom rope right there. Solomon Spades knew what he was doing, knew it wasn't an elimination. That was designed to inflict pain. Short arm clothesline by Spades takes Champagne down and Mitch Connor doing everything in his power to try to eliminate Tank Lawson. And I mean, Tank Lawson's expending no more energy at this mo moment than he would be lying in a hammock. Champagne struggling, trying to get back up to his vertical base. Although almost in a rumble, laying down is almost as good as being on your feet. That's right. I think Mitch Connor over taking a beating at the hands of of the big tank meister and look at this up to the top rope champagne off on to solomon spades and he's starting to go for a pin here yeah force of habit is that corkscrew champagne has won many matches with took solomon spades down but mitch connor was right there right on top of him. yeah it looks like they changed partners in this square dance it's mitch connor and champagne are going at it take loss and back on solomon spades Lawson Champagne sends Spades and Mitch Connor crashing into one another. Swinging neck break from Mitch Connor. And we got a Samoan drop by Tank Lawson. Tank Lawson got that, pulled that one out of nowhere. Solomon Spades in a world of hurt. We've got two standing, two on the floor. This one's winding down, but I tell you, this is exciting as all the previous rumbles have been. And let's see, looks like we've got two of them. Tank Lawson's got hold of Mitch Connor. Oh, he flapjacks him onto the canvas. Well, it certainly looks like Tank Lawson and Champagne may be the final two, the way they're teaming up together, although they squared off briefly, but once again, they pull back apart, going back to their adversaries instead. And look at this. Tank Lawson trying to walk a mud hole through the chest of Mitch Connor. He got him down. Champagne down. Solomon Spades pounding across the back and the shoulders. Reversal by Champagne. Well, Solomon, hung on, clothesline. Champagne, Solomon Spades, both are eliminated. Down to the final two already. Two men eliminated in one move. It's Tank Lawson and a very handsome man, Mitch Connor, who's flat on his back getting choked out.
Well, one of these two will definitely win the sixth annual CWF Rumble. After 30 men, it's come down to these two, and what in the world is Donnie Dollars doing back out of here? He's already been eliminated by Otto Schwartz previously. Big boot to take Lawson, courtesy of Donnie Dollars. While the officials were with Solomon Spades and Champagne, who are still battling at ringside, and there's Fat back himself, Brad Stutz. Drop kick by Spades to Champagne outside the ring. Dollars is running around here. Stunt is running around here. The officials have no idea what's going on. Donnie Dollars has KO'd Tate Lawson with the big boot straight to the face. And now Mitch Connor driving his unprotected knee to the skull. Tate Lawson's been eliminated. Mitch Connor has won the sixth annual CW Rumble. And it's Mitch Connor just looking at the camera and stating to himself he drew number one and won it. The only difference is that Matty D traded in the winning number for the number that was held by Mitch Connor. to be the new Fatback Enterprises? If that is indeed the case, this is certainly one incredible way to revitalize Fatback Enterprises as Mitch Connor has won quite possibly the biggest match in his life. Take Lawson can do nothing but look on and watch as Brad Stutz and Donnie Dollars have robbed Take Lawson of his win and handed it to Mitch Connor. I want this one! Yeah! Oh, I'm done it! Yeah! Choke on it, Lawson!